PR Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to We Talk News. I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis News. Kurt Dalton is on another assignment tonight, so we go to the bullpen and bring in the main man himself, Rye Russell. Hey, Rye. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I know I'm no Kurt Dalton, but hopefully I can live up to your esteemed audience's expectations. You absolutely will, Rye. And we're going to start this week in your state of Maine. It's just coming off its first week of weed sales in vacation land. So what are the big sales results in week one, Rye? We are off to an incredible start. Opening day was a huge success here in vacation land with six stores generating almost $100,000 in total sales and over 9,000 in sales tax generated for the state. So we'll wait for the official report for the first closing week. It's so amazing, isn't it? You, you read about Colorado and Illinois setting all these monthly records of millions and millions. Massachusetts does at least a million a day now. And the state of Maine took them four years to get to that starting line. But hey, at least it's going in the right direction now, right? It's about time we are ready for it. And this is just the beginning. And I got to ask you, how has the media coverage been? I checked a story from my old station, WGME TV 13 up there, and it seemed a little balanced, although they used that M word an awful lot. <laughs> Well, it is fairly balanced up here. However, I think that there's still a lot of ambiguity felt by the players in the market. And so I think there's still a lot of uncertainty of what the regulations are, how is enforcement going to be handled. But like all emerging markets, we're going to see some early adjustments and a very successful launch. Well, our next story is also about another New England state, Vermont, and they passed legalization last week, and some predictions now are being released about that market. But first, let's go to New York with Deborah Borchardt's Green Market Report. Deb? Thanks, guys. Well, we are just beginning to get into the earnings season. Markets were closed on Monday, so it was a shortened trading week. This week, AFRIO reported its first quarter revenue of $69.6 .6 million for fiscal year 2021. This is a 23% increase over the prior quarter and their sixth consecutive quarter of growth. They did report net losses of $5.1 million for that quarter. Harborside released preliminary third quarter 2020 results. The company said they expect revenue to come in at $18.5 million. Keep in mind, in June, their revenue was $15 million, so things are going in the right direction for Harborside. You should be aware that their ticker symbol has been changed. It went from HSDEF to HBORF. And the Valens Company reported third quarter financial results for the period ending in August. The company said net revenue was $18.1 million. That is a 10% increase from their third quarter in 2019 of $16.5 million. They also had a net loss of $3 million. And that's it for this week. I'm Deborah Borchart with the Green Market Report for Weed Talk News. Since Deborah was reporting on the earnings of many of the biggest cannabis companies, the public ones, you have to wonder who's going to jump into the Vermont market as it opens up. Now, Vicente Cedarberg's Andrew Livingston put out projections that the market in Vermont could reach $250 million but it might be 2025 or 2026 before that happens, right? Vermont only has a population of 600,000, but they call themselves the Green Mountain State for a reason, right? Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> as far as licensing is concerned, I see a lot of the same challenges that we've faced and are facing here in Maine. That being said, Vermont is a beautiful state known for its tourism. 
with estimates of 13 and a half million or more visitors every year. So even with the pandemic, people are looking for remote places and often they're looking to reconnect with nature and unplug from the digital world. So some reports, I'm reading one report right now, Jimmy, that says we shouldn't be surprised if Vermont can quickly rise to 800 million, maybe even a billion dollar market. Wow, that's huge. And if state that only has 600,000 people in Maine, you just told me has 1.5 million now. So what are the projections for the whole market in Maine going to be? Well, I think what we're finding, the medical market made a huge leap and major advancements last year. And I think with the addition of the rec market, I think it's going to quickly become Maine's top grossing export. Wow. That's going to be interesting to watch as most of New England now. And how would you like to be in New Hampshire? They're now surrounded by three legal states. Seems to me uh, that governor might want to get a little revenue going in the right direction. But uh, New Hampshire is a strange one of the New England states. No disrespect to some friends up there. Right? <laughs> the Nothing granite state. Are you afraid that New Hampshire might invade Maine someday or what? <laughs> No, I don't think so. The The Granite State is a beautiful place to visit, uh, yeah. but I, I like being up here in the great white north. There you go. All right. There are now four other states in the U.S. who will be voting on legalizing the adult use of cannabis in a few weeks. That Arizona, New Jersey, Montana and South Dakota. Now, on the other side of the world is New Zealand. And sure enough, they'll be voting on legalization this weekend. And right now, it's a dead heat. Right, New Zealand trying to become the 26th country to decriminalize, if not legalize, our favorite plant. Well, polling is a split. 49 to 49, leaving one, maybe 2% undecided up for grabs. This is going to be a nail biter. And I'm going to just ask, you've never visited New Zealand, have you? I have not, not yet. On the bucket list, as it is mine. All right. From the research world, this fact really has been known for quite a while. And make sure if you go in for surgery and you're going to get general anesthesia, please declare to your anesthesiologist that you enjoy cannabis. Why? Well, you might just wake up in surgery. A study at the University of Colorado Hospital among 118 patients who had surgery for a broken leg, that group that used cannabis needed much more anesthesia than those who did not partake. So Rai, have you known anybody who has awakened during surgery? Luckily, I personally do not, but I saw this article this morning and I'm really glad we're talking about it, Jimmy, because this is truly one of those, there are those that know and those that do not know types of things. And you don't necessarily wanna be one of those that did not know. So if you're going to surgery, this is information to please share with your doctors. Absolutely, 100%. And they're not there, by the way, to arrest you or hassle you or judge you. They're really just there to, well, take care of your body in whatever way it needs to be taken care of. So put trust in your medical community. Now, let's go to the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., for the D.C. Cannabis Report from Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. Phil? Vote Pro Podcast, here with the Weed Talk News D.C. Report. New Jersey Senator and one-time candidate for president, Cory Booker, raised the issue of racial disparities in marijuana enforcement during his questioning of Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett on Wednesday. While he didn't ask Barrett any specific questions on cannabis policy, Booker did point out the disparity saying, quote, there's no difference between blacks and whites for using drugs, but blacks are multiple times more likely to be arrested. The Senate Judiciary Committee will vote on the Barrett nomination on October 22nd. The Supreme Court this week declined to hear a case challenging the constitutionality of the DEA's Schedule I classification of cannabis. The suit was originally filed back in 2017 by a coalition of medical cannabis patients and activists. While fewer than 1% of petitions are granted a hearing by the High Court, the decision is nonetheless seen as a stinging defeat by leg legalization advocates. Representative Earl Blumenauer of Oregon, one of several members of Congress 
who signed an amicus brief in support of the lawsuit, vowed to continue the fight, however, saying, quote, it's more important than ever that we pass the Moore Act. Washington, D.C. Councilman Robert White introduced a bill this week that would expand opportunities for people with felony convictions to participate in the medical marijuana market. In introducing the bill, White said, quote, there is no reason why those who paid their debt to society should be locked out of this industry any longer. The legislation would end a ban on participation by most so-called returning citizens and create programs to encourage cannabis entrepreneurship among the formerly incarcerated. That's the Weed Talk News DC report for this week. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. A new report released by the FBI shows once again how law enforcement officers target persons of color for weed possession. The Uniform Crime Report claims that there were 545,602 people in the U.S. who were arrested on cannabis offenses last year. Now, amazingly, that same study reported that the number was more than 495,871 who were arrested for violent crimes. Now, what's even more disheartening is that 92% of cannabis arrests were for possession. Rye, black people are 3.6 times more likely to be arrested than white people. Another reason why reform of the federal laws have to happen. Right? This, is, this is just, bon I do agree. This is just bonkers. The fact that we're still talking about it. I I, these numbers speak for themselves. It doesn't matter what report you read. We need reform and we need it within this next administration. That's right. And a lot of the new laws that are coming out are expunging records. We know the job that the Last Prisoner Project and Steve D'Angelo have done. They're getting more and more people to get out of jail and get their records expunged. And that, I believe, is only the, the next green wave that will happen. But right now, let's go north of the border to Canada for Solomon Israel's Canadian Cannabis Report. Solomon? I'm Solomon Israel from Marijuana Business Daily International. And this is the Weed Talk News Canadian Cannabis Report. Cannabis producer Afria has reported growing recreational marijuana revenue for the quarter ended August 31st. The company's gross recreational revenue hit nearly 70 million Canadian dollars for the quarter, but that was offset by a decline in international revenue and net revenue declined on a quarterly basis. Aurora Cannabis has sold off its stake in Australian medical marijuana company Can Group. The company told Marijuana Business Daily it still sees potential in Australia's medical marijuana market, but for now it's focusing on core markets in Canada, the United States, and more mature medical marijuana markets abroad. And the vast majority of leadership positions in Canada's regulated marijuana sector are held by white males. That's the conclusion of a new analysis from the University of Toronto's Centre on Drug Policy Evaluation, which included 700 executives and directors of Canadian marijuana firms. All told, 84% of those leaders were white and 86% were men. You can read those stories and more at mjbizdaily.com. I'm Solomon Israel from Marijuana Business Daily. The MJ Biz Daily Factbook for 2020 is now available. And did you know that the median salary in the cannabis industry was $58,511 in 2018, while the median salary for U.S. workers as a whole was $52,000? That's according to Glassdoor data, just one of the many facts you'll find in the MJ Biz Daily Factbook. You can get yours online at mjbizdaily.com backslash factbook. A reminder that the CEO of MJ Biz Daily, Chris Walsh, will be joining David Rubinovitz and myself on the Friday edition of Cannabis Chat on the Green Rush program on twitch.tv backslash pro cannabis media live at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And speaking of upcoming programs, our friends at Green Flower are hosting an online conversation that is hosted by Max Simon, their founder, and two people from Normal on Thursday, October 22nd at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. Jen Michelle Padini, their development director, and Keith Strop, the founder of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, will join Max. Now, you can register on their website, green-flower.com. Max Simon is my guest on In the Weeds this week. 
and we release that show on Mondays on our PCM affiliates and social media outlets. Now, one final story to talk about this week, and yes, it's back to the great state of Maine for this one. I know Bangor, Maine is a little north of where you are, but there's a police officer on the force in Bangor who has quite a following on Facebook, and sure enough, he used that form to enlighten Maine people about the new laws. Do you know about this guy, Lieutenant Tim Cotton? Lieutenant Cotton is quite a local celebrity here. And the Bangor Police Department, believe it or not, they have been producing some of the greatest social media content of any police department in the nation. And it's terribly clever, it's super funny, and the public loves it. It's genuine, it's real. And what I found funny about this post was the disclaimers at the bottom of it. They recognize that you can sometimes in today's world get attacked from all angles. So there was a funny disclaimer, and we'll have to check it out, but it said that if you don't agree with the views or messages of that post, that it's okay because the writer doesn't want to do this job anyway. So they're <laughs> hilarious. I, yeah, I totally do. And, you know, it's very interesting as we sit here and we laugh about this and it got national attention, but it's this kind of a public service of information, an exchange of information where he's legitimizing the fact that, hey, it's now legal now. It's okay if you get the munchies. It's okay if you partake. Just don't do it against the law, like don't smoke it in public and make sure you use it responsibly and don't drive. And those are the messages that the public needs to hear. We understand that. But a lot of times when these public service announcements that are being produced by, let's say, the Massachusetts Cannabis Commission, when they come out, they come out very patronizing and pretending that it's, oh, you know, it's still a dangerous drug. You have to be careful with it. And you do, but you don't have to be arrogant about it or patronizing about it. Just accept that it's here and teach people about the substance. Do you agree with that, Ryan? I 100% agree. I don't think anybody in today's world needs a lecture. We're all just trying to exchange information peacefully so we can live our best lives. Oh, I like that. Live your best life. That sounds like the Green Nurse Group. But anyway, that'll do it for this week's We Talk News. I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media. And you and I'm are? I'm Russell. <laughs> and where are you and from? And I'm Ry Russell from Weed Buds Radio. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for sharing the love. You bet, right? Thank you so much for filling in with Kurt. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We Talk Now, We Talk News, and In the Weeds are all available on most major podcast distributors like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and our friends at clnsmedia.com and our flagship, cannabis.net. So subscribe, share, and like our videos on all the social media networks out there, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, The Weed Tube, and YouTube. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of pro-cannabis media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area, now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge, and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient-first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. We are Pro Cannabis Media.